Imagine being an ancient human, no shelters, no early warnings, no modern science, just you, your tribe, and the relentless force of nature. From explosive volcanoes to deadly hurricanes, natural disasters have always threatened survival, claiming millions and reshaping entire landscapes. So how did our early ancestors, with nothing but raw instincts and rudimentary tools, manage to endure nature's most brutal tests? What helped them survive? And were there disasters that almost drove them to extinction? Starting things off with one of the loudest bangs in all of history. See, around 74,000 years ago, the Earth faced one of the most powerful volcanic eruptions ever recorded. The Toba supervolcano in what we now call Sumatra, Indonesia. When this beast exploded, it didn't just leave behind a crater. It released nearly 2,800 cubic kilometers of volcanic debris into the air. To put that into perspective, that's thousands of times bigger than anything like Mount St. Helens or Krakatoa volcanoes that scare scientists even today. The Toba eruption was so fearsome, it wasn't even just a local disaster. No, it managed to affect the entire planet. Following one of the loudest booms in the history of the world, ash and gases shot into the atmosphere, blocking out sunlight and managing to cause what's known as a volcanic winter. Because of this, temperatures around the globe dropped dramatically by about 3 to 5 degrees Celsius, or approximately 37.4 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And although that seems small, this cooling period lasted for years, creating an ecological nightmare. Plants died off, animals struggled to survive, and food and water became scarce. It was like the Earth hit a reset button, but not in the worst way possible. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Somehow, early humans managed to survive this catastrophe. How? Well, the answer lies in their adaptability and resilience. For example, in places like South Africa and India, evidence shows that early Homo sapiens didn't just throw in the towel. In southern India, archaeologists found stone tools that date back to this exact time period, proving that people kept living their lives, even under a blanket of volcanic ash. In South Africa, at sites like Pinnacle Point and Blombos Cave, early humans found refuge by the coast. To survive, they relied heavily on marine resources, gathering shellfish and fishing. The ocean basically became their lifeline while the rest of the world was freezing and struggling. Genetic studies even back up the idea that this event caused a bottleneck in the human population. That's because this eruption likely wiped out many early human groups, leaving just a few thousand survivors. But those survivors were simply amazing and carried on. In fact, we're all here today because of them. So what exactly allowed humans to make it through? Well, fire, tools, and shelter building skills were essential for sure, but it was also about sticking together that made the difference. A recent study shows that social cooperation became crucial as people had to pull resources, work together to hunt, and share what little they had. It wasn't easy, but it was enough to keep them alive. So even though the Toba eruption was one of the darkest times in human history, it showed just how tough, innovative, and adaptable early humans could be. Without those skills, who knows if we'd even be around today to talk about it. And if you think that was insane, early humans had to survive a literal comet impact. Stay with us, because the story is insane. Okay, for this one, we have to take a trip back around 12,800 years ago to a period known as the Younger Dryas. This was the period that saw the sudden return to icy conditions after the Earth had started warming up from the last ice age. For many, the big question that still gets debated today is, what triggered this rapid climate shift? And to explain this, we have the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, a theory that suggests a massive comet or asteroid struck the Earth and threw everything into chaos. Here's how it goes. According to this hypothesis, fragments of a comet crashed into the northern hemisphere, causing widespread fires, sudden temperature drops, and environmental mayhem. This wasn't some small impact, either. We're talking about explosions so powerful, they could have wiped out entire ecosystems and drastically altered the climate. The idea is that these fragments hit places covered in ice, like North America and parts of Europe, sending shockwaves into the atmosphere and creating a nuclear winter effect. But what made this hypothesis particularly intriguing is how it ties into the extinction of megafauna. 
like mammoths and giant sloths, as well as the sudden decline of the Clovis people, one of the earliest known human cultures in North America. The environmental destruction caused by the comet impact would have disrupted food chains and habitats and possibly led to massive wildfires, leaving ancient humans and animals alike scrambling to survive. So how did people manage through this icy curveball? Well, they had to adapt. Archaeological evidence even suggests that human groups became more resourceful during this time. While some species and cultures vanished, others found ways to cope with the harsher, colder conditions. So, for example, ancient humans in places like the Middle East and parts of Asia likely shifted their hunting and gathering strategies, focusing on smaller animals and foraging for whatever plants could survive the colder climates. In other areas, humans might have moved to more stable regions with better access to resources, ensuring their survival while the planet struggled to recover. The Younger Dryas impact hypothesis is still hotly debated today, with some scientists pointing to other possible causes for the cooling, like changes in the ocean currents. But one thing is clear, something happened that threw Earth's climate back into an icy tailspin, and humans, being as adaptable as ever, managed to endure it setting the stage for the rise of agriculture and more advanced civilizations that would come later. So whether it was a comet or something else, this event was a defining moment in human history, one that tested our ancestors' ability to survive in a suddenly hostile world. And if that wasn't crazy enough, the period began with a terrifying underwater volcanic eruption. Want to know how that went down? Stay glued to your screen. Speaking of screens, quick pause. If you're enjoying this journey through the prehistoric world, don't forget to like and subscribe. More than 97% of our viewers watch without subscribing, and we'd love to have you join our tribe. That would make all the difference. So, is it done? Great, thanks a ton. Now let's talk about the insane Lacazé eruption, which happened around 12,900 years ago in modern-day Germany. This volcanic blast wasn't as widely known as some others, but it packed a punch and left a lasting mark on the surrounding environment, and possibly on ancient humans too. See, the Lacazé volcano, located in the Eiffel region, erupted with incredible force, sending ash and pumice flying as far as 1,000 kilometers away. To give you an idea, this eruption was on a smaller scale to Mount Pinatubo in 1991, one of the largest eruptions in modern history. That blast threw tons of ash into the atmosphere, causing temperatures to drop and leading to a mini-volcanic winter, much like the famous Toba eruption. It also filled the air with sulphur, which would have made breathing in the area difficult, and likely contributed to crop failure for those living nearby. So how did ancient humans deal with this volcanic chaos? At the time, Europe was home to various hunter-gatherer communities, including groups that used advanced stone tools. The eruption would have disrupted their way of life significantly, as massive ash fallout would have poisoned water sources and made hunting difficult, as animals fled or died from the harsh conditions. Interestingly, this eruption happened during the start of the Younger Dryas, and whether it directly caused the cold period is still up for debate, but it certainly made surviving in Europe a tough challenge. In fact, archaeological evidence suggests that some humans likely moved to less affected areas or adapted to the tougher conditions by altering their hunting and foraging strategies. Just like with other environmental disasters, human resilience and adaptability were key to making it through this period. Communities likely relied on more cooperative strategies, sharing resources and migrating to regions where the environment was less devastated by the eruption. Today, the Lacazé eruption serves as a reminder that even thousands of years ago, volcanic activity could reshape landscapes, change climates, and challenge human survival. If an underwater eruption wasn't bad enough, how about a giant tsunami? Okay, for this one we have to dive into one of the most dramatic underwater landslides in history, the Storega Slide. This landslide was so massive, it led to a massive tsunami about 8,200 years ago. This event happened off the coast of Norway when a huge chunk of the continental shelf collapsed into the North Atlantic. The scale of this slide was enormous as it displaced around 3,500 cubic kilometers of sediment, enough to bury a country like Luxembourg several times over. 
The landslide sent a giant tsunami racing across the North Sea, hitting parts of present-day Scotland, Norway and the Faroe Islands. Some estimates suggest that the waves could have reached heights of up to 20 metres, around 65 feet in some areas. Coastal communities at the time, particularly in Scotland's low-lying regions, would have been absolutely devastated. Ancient humans living in these areas were mostly hunter-gatherers, so just imagine how terrifying it must have been for those people. Archaeological findings in places like Doggerland, a now submerged land bridge between Britain and mainland Europe, suggest that this area might have been heavily affected. The tsunami could have sped up the flooding of Doggerland, further reducing habitable land. So how did they survive this disaster? Well, just like with other natural catastrophes, humans adapted. The survivors likely moved inland, away from the coastlines, to safer, higher ground. Evidence shows that human activity continued in the region after the tsunami, meaning people found ways to rebuild, possibly altering their settlements to avoid future disasters. What's fascinating is that these people were already pretty resourceful, as they had developed sophisticated stone tools and were skilled hunters and fishermen. They would have used their knowledge of the land and their surroundings to find new, safer locations to settle and continue their lives. The Storega slide tsunami was a stark reminder of nature's power, but it also highlighted the resilience of ancient humans. They endured and adapted, as they had done with countless other challenges before, allowing their cultures to survive and evolve, even in the face of devastating events. Okay, now let's talk about one that has the potential to take us out any time now. That's right, we're talking about the Yellowstone Supervolcano, a geological powerhouse located in the United States. Known for its stunning landscapes and geothermal features, Yellowstone is hiding a dangerous secret beneath the surface. The secret actually has the insane potential to end us all, and it has been tried several times before. See, the Yellowstone Supervolcano has erupted several times over the past couple of million years, with the most significant eruptions occurring around 2.1 million, 1.3 million, and about 640,000 years ago, all while homonyms walked the Earth. But let's talk about the most recent eruption. The last major eruption, around 640,000 years ago, was an explosive event that released an estimated 1,000 cubic kilometers of volcanic material into the atmosphere. That's enough to cover the entire state of New York with a thick layer of ash. This eruption created the vast caldera we see today, which is a giant crater formed after the volcanic material was ejected and the land collapsed. If another super eruption were to occur, the impacts could be catastrophic, as ash clouds would spread across large parts of North America and the immediate area could experience pyroclastic flows, which, by the way, are fast-moving currents of hot gas and volcanic matter. The ash fallout would bury nearby towns, disrupt agriculture, and impact air travel, leading to significant disruptions in everyday life. But if it would be that bad for us, we have to ask, how did ancient humans handle earlier eruptions from this geological giant? Well, during the last major eruption, the climate would have been dramatically affected. Scientists believe it could have triggered a volcanic winter, leading to a global temperature drop and possibly severe disruptions to food supplies. But here's the thing, as we've seen already, early humans had some survival tricks up their sleeves. For example, groups living in North America at the time were primarily hunter-gatherers, relying on natural resources for their sustenance. In the face of the environmental upheaval caused by the eruption, these early peoples did something unexpected as they had to adapt quickly. Today, evidence suggests that populations might have migrated away from the immediate vicinity of Yellowstone, seeking safer grounds where food sources were less impacted. Archaeological findings even indicate that people in the region were resourceful, employing advanced stone tool technology and sophisticated hunting techniques. So they most likely turned to foraging for wild plants and hunting small game, as larger animals may have become scarce due to the eruption's aftermath. Interestingly, the presence of obsidian, a type of volcanic glass found in the region, points to the ongoing human activity even after the eruption. This means that while the eruption would have posed significant challenges, early humans were resilient, using their knowledge of the landscape and available resources to survive and thrive despite the volcanic threat. It also means early humans conquered a volcano and used its remains as resources to improve their lives. 
Now that is impressive. But there is one incident that almost ended it all, and it wasn't as far back as you'd expect. When we think of Ice Age, our minds immediately go to the hit movie franchise, but in actuality, an Ice Age is no joke. As far as we know, the Earth has had at least five major Ice Ages. The first one happened about 2 billion years ago and lasted about 300 million years, while the most recent one started about 2.6 million years ago and, in fact, we are still technically in it. Now, of the five Ice Ages, ancient humans have survived two. The one that lasted between 930,000 and 813,000 years ago, and the one that began about 115,000 years ago and ended about 11,000 years ago, with the start of the current interglacial period. Now, you might think an ice age isn't all that bad. After all, the planet only dropped some degrees. You would be wrong. Very wrong. See, during this period, the planet was significantly cooler than it is today. In fact, at the height of the Ice Age, when vast ice sheets blanketed much of North America, the global average temperature was around 46 degrees Fahrenheit, or 8 degrees Celsius, which is about 11 degrees Fahrenheit, or 6 degrees Celsius colder than today's average. While that temperature drop might seem minor, it was enough to cover large portions of North America and Eurasia in ice sheets. The Earth was so much drier, with lower sea levels, as much of the water was locked in ice. Dry, grassy plains, known as steppes, were widespread, along with savannas and deserts. And perhaps the craziest thing was humans were alive then. Now, although the Homo sapiens story is extremely fascinating, let's rewind a bit and look at the older Homo erectus and the worst ice age in human history. Between 930,000 and 813,000 years ago, Earth experienced one of its many ice ages during the Pleistocene Epoch, a time of intense climatic fluctuations that tested the resilience of every living species. This particular glaciation brought extreme cold, with massive ice sheets stretching across the Northern Hemisphere, covering vast areas of Europe, Asia and North America. During this time, winters were long and harsh, while well, the landscape was dominated by barren, frozen expanses. Rivers and lakes turned to ice, and the drier conditions left much of the water locked in glaciers, lowering sea levels and transforming the terrain. For the early humans alive at this time, primarily Homo erectus, survival was a hectic challenge. Homo erectus, however, was not phased and was a highly adaptable species, well suited to endure such extreme conditions. One of their greatest advantages was their use of advanced tools. Studies have shown that they were skilled in crafting Aculean tools, particularly hand axes, which allowed them to hunt large animals, butcher their prey, and process plant material for food. This technological edge made a critical difference in a world where resources were often scarce, and large game animals like mammoths and woolly rhinos became essential for survival. Additionally, Homo erectus was likely one of the first species to harness the power of fire. This mastery of fire was a game-changer, as it provided much-needed warmth during the frigid nights, served as a protection against predators, and allowed them to cook their food. Cooking might seem trivial, but it not only made food easier to digest, but also unlocked more nutrients, providing the necessary calories for survival during the harsh winters. Migration was another survival strategy employed by Homo erectus. That's because as the ice sheets expanded, they forced early humans to adapt by moving to more hospitable areas. Homo erectus, being spread across Africa, Asia and parts of Europe, was constantly on the move, following animal herds, seeking new food resources, and settling in warmer regions when the cold became unbearable. Their ability to migrate and find new habitats made them exceptionally resilient in the face of the constantly shifting climate. They even knew how to track the seasonal availability of food and water, giving them a survival advantage over more stationary species. But that wasn't all, because social cooperation also played a vital role in their survival. That's right, in such harsh environments, no individual could survive alone. And early humans, even humans as old as Homo erectus, likely relied heavily on cooperation within their groups, hunting together and sharing the food they gathered. This collective effort increased their chances of survival, allowing them to pool their resources and skills. Essentially, the development of basic social structures and communication, although rudimentary, would have been invaluable, especially during times of scarcity. 
Somehow, despite the challenges, Homo erectus not only survived, but also thrived during this period. Their ability to adapt their diet, feeding on a mix of meat, roots, nuts, and other plant materials, ensured that they could find sustenance even when certain resources were scarce. They also continually refined their toolmaking skills, allowing them to exploit more varied resources. These innovations, along with their growing social bonds and the crucial mastery of fire, allowed them to survive through some of the harshest conditions early humans ever faced. However, not all human species were as fortunate during this time, because while Homo erectus proved to be adaptable, other archaic hominins struggled to keep up pace with the harsh conditions of the Ice Age. Some species, like the Homo heidelbergensis, emerged during this period, but faced challenges that eventually led to their decline. Other archaic humans across Eurasia, perhaps less skilled in fire control or tool making, would not have been able to survive the extreme cold and resource scarcity as effectively. These populations either died out or became isolated in pockets where they could no longer sustain viable communities. Now, the Ice Age that plagued the ancient humans was a brand new story. Well, remember the eruption of the Toba supervolcano around 74,000 years ago that plunged the world into a deep volcanic winter? Well, the eruption intensified the already harsh conditions of the last Ice Age, and this event is believed to have caused a severe genetic bottleneck for Homo sapiens, reducing their population to as few as 1,000 to 10,000 individuals. That's right, only between 1,000 and 10,000 humans were alive during this period. The volcanic winter dramatically dropped global temperatures, leading to widespread famine as ecosystems collapsed and food became scarce. Despite these dire conditions, Homo sapiens managed to survive, and the key to their survival was their adaptability and use of advanced tools. As we've said countless times, early humans could hunt more efficiently, and their control of fire provided warmth and a means to cook food, making nutrients more accessible. They lived in small, mobile groups, allowing them to follow migratory animals and avoid inhospitable areas. Additionally, their social structures promoted cooperation and resource sharing, crucial during times of scarcity. Over time, the climate slowly improved. Homo sapiens expanded again, repopulating different regions of Africa and eventually migrating outwards. As anyone would expect, this bottleneck event significantly shaped the genetic diversity of modern humans, but their resilience, adaptability, and cooperation helped them endure one of the most challenging periods in human history. In the end, the survival of ancient humans through countless natural disasters is a testament to our humanity, their adaptability, ingenuity, and resilience. From mastering fire to crafting tools, migrating across vast lands and forming tight-knit communities. Our ancestors found ways to overcome the harshest challenges that nature could throw at them. These early humans not only survived, but thrived, shaping the course of human evolution in the face of floods, volcanic eruptions, ice ages, and shifting landscapes. But what do you think? What was the worst natural disaster in human history, and which event shocked you the most? Let us know in the comment section below. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to keep learning about the wonders of prehistoric times. Until next time, bye.